Hey, let's tell them about when we visited the house that's on the back of a nickel. Yeah, that was really cool. Welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels with your hosts, Sean and Marianne Vaughn. <laughs> well, hello, pair of peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. And I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. Hey, that's right. We are talking about Monticello, and better yet, our visit to Monticello. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Monticello, if you caught our video Tuesday... And most of you probably didn't actually realize this, but it's on the back of a nickel. We got even more better information for you. That's not the front of the house. What? That's actually the back of the house that's on the nickel because it has the dome. The front yeah. of the house doesn't have the dome. Right. He didn't really usually talk about having a, a front and a back. He had the east front and the west front. Yeah, the way it was designed. But, but you know... You just wouldn't be received from the side that's on the nickel. Yeah. So I say back of the house. We didn't actually didn't go into the side that's on the nickel. We went. We went on the other side. The other side, which yeah, was the front which is side, which, which is, is the way that he would have all of his guests enter as well. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, Pretty cool. Pretty interesting. So if you haven't been there, you probably didn't know that, right? True. So we are talking about panning the number. 1883, which is Thomas Jefferson's Monticello. <laughs> yes. And this is located at 931 Thomas Jefferson Parkway, Charlottesville, Virginia. And it is open to the public. You can tour it. And we visited this July of last year. I mm -hmm. believe it was July. Daggone it. 16, 17, 15, 16, something like that. I'll put it yeah. in the description. Yeah. Yeah. I always should look these, look up when we visited there, what the panic D number is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. That whole time it was on the panic D screen while I was talking to the camera. Oh, that's okay. It's all good. Folks, you know us by now. <laughs> we are here documenting our haunted travels. So. Let's, before we go further, because I know you got a bunch of stuff you like to talk about, let's tell them some of the history of Monticello. Okay. Okay? Sure. So this is a, maybe a little bit longer video, but it's actually kind of cool stuff. So stick with us. Watch this history. We'll come back. We're going to tell you some of our experiences, a little bit of stuff about Monticello. And, uh, yeah, we're going to mention, folks, it's haunted. <laughs> So we'll be right back. Monticello sits atop a hill in Virginia, not far from the birthplace of Thomas Jefferson, its creator and most prominent resident, who spent more than four decades designing, dismantling, and reimagining the estate that he called his essay in architecture. Now this building, Monticello, has been a World Heritage Site since 1987 and is considered a national treasure, not only for its beauty and historical significance, but also for what it reveals about the U.S. president that we had as our third president. This complex, controversial president whose political philosophy fundamentally changed and shaped the nation. Franklin D. Roosevelt once wrote, more than any historic home in America, Monticello speaks to me as an expression of the personality of its builder. Thomas Jefferson grew up in one of the largest tobacco plantations in Virginia, and then at the age of 21, he inherited several thousand acres of land that encompassed his family's estate, as well as his favorite boyhood haunt a nearby hilltop called Monticello, Italian for a little mountain, where he resolved to build his own home. And in 1768, a year after this future president was admitted to the Virginia Bar, workers broke ground on the site, beginning a decades-long process that would captivate Jefferson, bankrupt his family, 
and produce one of America's most iconic and historically significant architectural masterpieces. Now, at the time that Thomas Jefferson was around, it was very common for landowners to choose a design for their home from an architectural handbook, and then a contractor would seem to oversee the project from start to finish. But this particular landowner, our Thomas Jefferson, he was not one who would be interested in that. In fact, he had a lot of passions, you know, political philosophy, archaeology, linguistics, music, botany, bird watching, even pasta making. But he really got into architecture. And he was remembered for drafting our Declaration of Independence. But not only did he draft the blueprints for our independence, he drafted the blueprints for Monticello Mansion as well and all of the outbuildings, gardens, and grounds. Though he didn't have any formal training, we know he was an avid reader, and he had read extensively about architecture, particularly that of Rome and the Italian Renaissance. In later years, he would become an accomplished architect whose designs would include the Virginia State Capitol and the main buildings at the University of Virginia. Monticello was unique though, not only in its design, but also for its use of local resources. At a time when most brick was still imported from England, Jefferson decided to mold and bake his own bricks with clay that he found on the property. Monticello's grounds provided most of the lumber, the stone and limestone, and even the nails that were used to construct the buildings he had those manufactured on site as well. In 1770, the family house at Shadwell burned down. This forced Jefferson to move into the South Pavilion at Monticello, an outbuilding until the main house was complete. Now, two years later, he was joined by his new bride, Martha Wales Skelton, a 23-year-old widowed daughter of a prominent Virginia lawyer. Together, the couple had six children only two of them, however, lived to adulthood. But before Martha died in 1782, she did have her final child of the six, and then she died just a couple months later. Devastated by the loss of his wife, Jefferson decided to flee. He actually went to France. He moved there and served as the U.S. ambassador from 1785 to 1789. While he was there, he was struck by the architecture of the buildings, particularly a certain home in Paris that had a U-shaped design and a domed roof. Along with a massive trove of art, furniture, and books, he returned home with a new vision for his estate. Among other enhancements that he made, he added a central hallway, a mezzanine bedroom floor, and an octagonal dome which was the first of its kind anywhere in the United States. The second Monticello was double in its size. It was designed to accommodate not only Jefferson's steady stream of house guests, but also his boundless collection of books, European art, Native American artifacts, natural specimens, and mementos from all of his travels. Monticello was also filled with his unique inventions. Now these also included a revolving book stand, a copying machine, and a spherical sundial and toenail clipper. In addition to the architecture though, Monticello is very renowned for its extensive gardens, which Jefferson, an avid horticulturalist, designed, tended, and painstakingly monitored himself. Every year he resided at Monticello, he kept a log of its flora as well as all of the insects and diseases that ravaged them in a diary known as the Garden Book. He grew hundreds of varieties of fruits and vegetables there, using cultivation techniques that were totally revolutionary for his time. He was a connoisseur of European wines as well and attempted to plant a number of different grape varieties at Monticello, although he didn't do very well at that. His vines tended to fail. Never did they thrive. 
and he developed a reputation as America's first serious viticulturalist. Monticello was not just a residence, but it was also a working plantation and a home to nearly 130 enslaved African Americans, whose duties included tending its gardens and livestock, plowing the fields, and work on its on-site textile factory. One of these slaves was a woman named Sally Hemings. She was a teenager who originally accompanied Jefferson and his young daughters to Paris. Later, she served as a chambermaid and seamstress as a house slave at Monticello. For nearly two centuries, it's been speculated that Jefferson and Hemings may have had as many as six children together. These claims were brought to light by a 1998 DNA study that revealed a genetic link between their respective descendants. Although some have said that it may have actually been Jefferson's younger brother, Randolph, who was the father and not Jefferson himself. Although we may not know ever the true relationship that Jefferson had with Sally Hemings, it would be impossible to tell the story of Monticello without acknowledging the irony of a home whose library shelves were overflowing with works of enlightenment, but yet were always dusted by slaves. Now, along with his idea of loving books, we know that he spent lavishly many times on books, others on wine and pretty much anything else. And when the time came for his death on July 4th of 1862, he left his heirs a small mountain of debt, a Monticello of debt, I suppose. In fact, that mountain of debt was over $100,000 and his daughter Martha Randolph was forced to sell the estate and most of his effects. The building itself had already entered stages of decay due to neglect over the years. And in 1836, it was purchased by Uriah Levy, a real estate speculator who was the first Jewish American to serve an entire career as a commissioned Navy officer. Now he and his nephew, Jefferson Monroe Levy, are largely responsible with this restoration and preservation. The Thomas Jefferson Foundation, a nonprofit organization, later purchased the property in 1923, and it continues to this day to operate it as a museum and educational institution. All right, so yeah, that was the history of Monticello. Yeah, it was sad that towards the end there, well, I guess, yeah, I don't know. He, 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 he was broke, and... <laughs> Actually, he got bailed out once and like did it again. Did so it this again. is a, a cool story. He had a very vast book collection. Yes. Very vast book collection. Huge. And he sold it to the library. Well, sold it to Congress to create the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. That's how it was established because there was a fire. Right. That burnt the original collection. So he sold it, and that's how he got money, and he got out of debt. But guess what? He started spending money, bought more books. Yeah, because he just couldn't live without books. <laughs> he couldn't just live without books. And yes. then when he died, he was so much in debt. So Yeah, so I don't know if this is like tipping to the Library of Congress state when we'll do that location. That's however, coming. That's coming however you can go to the Library of Congress, and you can see... Some of his book original book collection. And in fact, they have a whole area just done, dedicated to the Jefferson okay, collection. Okay, well, we'll talk about that in the Library of Congress so video. This you is can, the Monticello video. I know, video. but you can go and see I his know. books. We will talk yeah. about that later. Okay. But... <laughs> All right, so some interesting things about Monticello. Go ahead, take it away. You got some stuff you want to... Well, there. even though he was quite... The camera's up there, by well, the way. I like talking to you, though. Okay, well, you can talk to talk me, to but them. don't look at the screen, because I'm as bad as that, too, because <laughs> I look at the screen watching you talk, but the camera's up there. Okay, go ahead. That might make it in the video. It might not. Oop, uh -huh. I just bumped the computer. Hopefully, we're still recording. Okay, yeah. All right, so anyways, one of the things that I find quite interesting is that even though he was in debt again at his time of death mm -hmm. um, 
and they did sell off a lot of his possessions, pretty much most of his things, including his slaves, uh, were sold off to pay his debts at his death. Mm-hmm. His daughter, by the his way, daughter sold it did all that. Off. Right. And Monticello was in disarray at that time. It was pretty tore up and yeah. Uh, what, not taken care of. What's interesting, though, is that today, about 60% of the items that are displayed at Monticello were actually Thomas Jefferson's. Yeah, that's, throughout the that's years, cool. Yeah, throughout the years, they've been able to purchase items back and, and things have been donated back, things like that. And over 150 items, including some of the art that's hanging in the building, are actually Thomas Jefferson's. So this was one of those places, too, where we weren't allowed to take pictures inside. But I'm kind of excited because we do have audio of the tour and it's been recovered. Yay! Yay. So maybe later, this is coming out on Friday, so maybe later, late, 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 kind of keep an eye on our channel if we're up, we might be doing something kind of a surprise for you guys where we're going to play that audio over a live stream we have a couple other we have an audio clip from the cemetery that you were recording your audio Mm -hmm. and i think there's one other i don't know what it is but uh i'm gonna try something to do like that virtual ghost investigation review type thing where we play the audio and it'll create a video and you guys listen intently and see if you hear something in Monticello because it is haunted. If you didn't catch the video from Tuesday, the ghost stories and folklore about Monticello, I'm going to put a link right here. Bing! And there'll be a link down in the description which talks about several paranormal claims, most of which when people are on tour. Mm -hmm. So I didn't listen to that whole recording myself yet. Yeah. Uh, There might be some EVPs in there. And actually, his bedroom. Is actually one of the ones that has several yes. sightings. Of, well, that's where he died. Yes. So talk about his death, which is quite interesting. Do you remember it, or do you need to look it up and I'll talk about something? Oh else? no, his he he died on July fourth. But him and Adams. Right, and they um, they they were not like on the best of terms. No. So not you know really. they were kind of like for the presidency. Yeah. So. Yeah. So they they were. Uh, they were both fairly ill, and they Adams were actually they were very, said... They were, they got along, but they were very competitive. Yes. Adams actually made the comment when he when he was dying, literally on his deathbed, well, it looks like, you know, something to the effect that Jefferson won out, he's going to live longer than me. He didn't realize that Jefferson already had passed away that same day. On July they 4th. They both died on July 4th, which is... How, how, how many hours apart? I think it was two... Two hours apart. Something like that. Which was the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which Thomas Jefferson was supposed to go to Washington for a ceremony of that, but he was sick and couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to live to that 50th anniversary, and he died that day. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. So he did live to the anniversary. Um. Not the celebration. Do you have some more stuff? Because I, I, there's a quote that I want to talk about, too. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed, uh, when you go in, uh, the entrance that you get to go in, right in the corner on your left, when you walk in the door, um, it would be on the right if you were facing the door, but when you come in, there's there's a, a time piece that he built into the building. And... Um, it told the days of the week, I believe it was. It was days of the week, wasn't it? I think it had months on it too. Maybe. Um, Again, but we what's couldn't really take cool pictures inside, but was um, that based on the length? It probably in the history video. Yeah, based on the length that he actually had to have one of the dumb waiters actually had to go down into uh, the the basement, so it had to go down. There's a, there's a hole in the floor. With the, with the chains that go down because in order for it to actually work correctly, um, it, it couldn't just be just the height of the room. Yeah. So that was kind of... When it kinda, was originally designed, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was... The floor I thought that was really nifty. I enjoyed... That was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. So 
Did Dude. you say what kind of clock was? It's like a perpetual one. They have it, to it wind is. it, but it keeps. Yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. I that didn't, I didn't say that, too. but yes. So Thomas Jefferson, quite interesting figure, um, you know, third president, um, architect. Uh, he was also a, um, the France, what is that called? The, uh. Oh my God, we're both getting old. We are so old. All I can think of is all I can think of is delegate, and that's not not correct. Ambassador. Ambassador. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Ambassador to France. (laughs) Uh, I mean, just all kinds of stuff, and you know, the right, the author of the Declaration of Independence, where he wrote. You know, all, where all men are created equal, but yet he was a slave owner, mm-hmm. and he kind of had issues with that. Yes, you know, he, he really did. Well, there's there's some historians that say yes, it's true, and others say no, it's not true. But he, Perhaps. after his wife passed away, his first wife, they get they got married, had six kids. Perhaps he had children with one of the slaves. slaves. Mm -hmm. Um, actually I know her name. Yes. Um, and she actually was with him, uh, the one that he had the Sally Hemings. Uh, when he was over in France. Yeah, he took her to France. He took her to France. Actually, uh, and this was in the history video. Um, but, uh, she was a teenager and accompanied Jefferson and his, uh, young daughters to paris and then when she came back she was um in the house she was a same house, house slave Chandler slave yeah mm-hmm. um but like i said there's 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 controversy over that and the ownership um, of the slaves because he did own the slaves yet you know and i'm not knocking at that whole thing is um you know horrible but um, they did run the plantation and the mill that was there and the the brick um, <laughs> that made the bricks and all that stuff for the house and everything like that. I don't know that he paid them. He housed them, you know, and fed them and that kind of stuff. So I don't know how strict of a slave owner he was. Mm-hmm. But the controversy over Sally Hemings and him about him being the father now that's out there is that there are some historians that say it could have been his brother. It's not him. Yeah, it's it it could go either way, you know. You know, because they did DNA testing. So yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it it you know, it's part of history. It, mm-hmm. it is out there. Wasn't there something uh, to the fact that he did not release his son from slavery at his death? Wasn't there something about that? Now that you say that, I remember that. There was some sort of controversy over that because everybody's like, "You didn't even he didn't even release yeah. his son." Yeah. There was something they mentioned that on the tour, mm-hmm. but we haven't listened to that audio in a while. So maybe yeah. when we go and listen to that back, they talk about that. Yeah, I don't remember. So okay, so let's get back to Monticello a little bit. Um, One of the things that he really liked was the idea of open space and yeah. not cluttering rooms. You and him would have gotten along so yeah. well. He'd hate it. Here. He would. He would hate me. Uh, but he actually had uh, the beds and everything built into the walls so that they wouldn't be out in the middle of the room. In, in you know, yeah, that was his, pretty. His neat. bed, actually, the bed that he died in, um, was actually built in the in wall. the wall. So yeah. one side was his study, and the other side was like um, was that like his. his his dressing, dressing room type chambers, thing. Yeah, yeah. Dressing chambers. Yeah. Um, and then his closets were actually above that. Yeah. You had like to a climb ladder a ladder to go, to to go up to closet. his clothing clothing. But, you know, he didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> he had he had people that did that, you yeah. know, he had his slaves took care of all that for him. But 
um, I, I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. They weren't, you know, the, uh, what's those beds, the Murphy bed, they weren't Murphy beds. They literally were sideways in the wall. Uh, and then they were, of course, were a little bit shorter and everybody's like, were they really that short? But they would sleep with a lot of pillows up. Yeah. A so lot of times they, they would sleep keep from sitting up Ill. back in, yeah. Back in the early 18, you know, late 1700s, early 1800s, they would actually sleep setting up because they didn't understand the issues with um, acid reflex and that kind of stuff. And, you know, of course, as you get older and you get that little pot belly, you're getting acid reflex. Um, so they would sleep setting up. Yeah, so, so the, the beds, beds look really quite short. Yeah. And, they'd pop uh, pillows up and they would be, you know, sitting right, up in bed. Yeah. So people think all the time, were they really that short? But no, they just yeah. sort of recline. So the actual tour, do you remember what we paid for it? I do not do recall. Not. So you go into like a parking area, mm -hmm. um, very large parking I'll look lot. look it up. And then you uh, walk up into like a welcome center. Mm -hmm. And they have different tours. They have the tour of the house, the tour of the gardens, the tour of this, tour of that, that kind right. of thing. And a behind the scenes tour, which future Sean and Marianne, you got to book that ahead of time because it sells up quick. Yes, we we got there <laughs> what like nine in the morning or something like that, yeah. and it was already it was already out. sold out for the day, and actually sold out for the day after as well. Um, and they're like, "Well, you can come back on this date," and we're yeah. like, "We like, won't no, be, we'll be here." Home, so, so. Uh, so adults are uh, looks like they're twenty nine dollars twenty six if you buy them online with a discount. That's interesting. Online discount. There's never discounts online anymore. Um, and uh, so that's $29 for adults. And that tour goes off like, I think it was like every 15 minutes. Um, so they give you like a time mm -hmm. to meet at a certain place, which is like... Up on the mountain. Yeah, in front of the house. Okay, so the word Monticello actually means little mountain mm -hmm. in Italian. Mm -hmm. um, this mountain, and I'm probably recapping the history video. Um, but this, this property was, um, where he played as a child. His father owned it. Right. Um, and in the video, it talks about, uh, the property that he inherited and stuff like that. But one of the cool things that's inside, and you can find these pictures online and they might even been in the history video. I don't know. But, um, the map, um, his father drew a map of Virginia, which was very popular, and um, he made a lot of money on it. And uh, it's the original map is actually hanging in Monticello, which is very cool. I mean, you know, I'm I'm really into historical stuff and historical items, and that map is hanging in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that made it possible for, you know. Monticello being there actually, right? So to have the money for that. And... Yeah. So okay. the original, you know, the original uh, property was 5,000 acres. So that's how his father got paid, mm -hmm. um, was in land for those maps. So pretty cool. That's pretty neat, though, too. How did you get paid? Oh, they gave me a... Yeah, they just like, gave me land. Ohio. But could you imagine <laughs> just walking around, drawing a map, measuring, mm -hmm. you know... And coming a up lot. That's basically what all the early surveyors did. I mean, that that was their thing. Yeah. I mean, people lived their entire lives doing just that. Um. What else do you have? Uh. For the actual building, um, some of the paintings that were in are in there are important. Some of the um ways that uh, the um fireplaces are they're kind of interesting and you'll hear that kind of stuff when we do if you do that special little video for them on friday night uh yeah. but uh, so i don't want to give too much away just in case they actually do get that chance if not we'll come back some other time and talk about it but uh those are those are interesting and in the ways that you know you got around the house and where the different rooms were and how you got to go in and out of the building and um, where the, where the basements privies were and also where the, all the wines and things. He had huge, huge wine cellars. Yeah. Well, he tried to, Cisterns. he tried to have a winery 
and mm-hmm. they, he wasn't real successful, but you know, it's like Thomas Jefferson with the light bulb. You know, he discovered eight hundred. Thomas some, Jefferson with the light bulb. Thomas Edison with the light bulb. Sorry, <laughs> uh, he discovered eight hundred and some ways not to not make a light bulb. How not to make a light bulb? Yeah. So uh, Thomas Jefferson, not Edison, was like that too. So he, um, like, discovered so many different ways of what different plants would not grow in that area you know right. yeah and he, he kept a, a journal expansive garden and, yeah. and everything too he kept a journal keeping track of you know how much they watered them and all that other stuff and what failed and what worked and uh what got disease and what mm-hmm. you know that was just like a little side hobby just one of many yeah. actually that yeah. he had so also it's pretty pretty interesting they um have turned the stables into their gift shop. So when you go, of course, you go to a gift shop. shop. Uh, But it's interesting. But it's interesting that like it's in his stables. Like eh, we don't want that in the house. But we we got ice cream. (laughs) But we did. We got ice cream, and right outside of that, we had um, the ability to write with the. the quills. The quills, um, and they would hang, hang them out to dry. You come back later and, and pick those up. That was pretty neat. Um, the ice cream, they had wooden spoons. I kind of, I, I like that. You know, when we were growing up, you we always those. had, mm-hmm, when we were growing up, we always had those, like, uh, those little paddles, but these were legit spoons. Yeah, they were like. Um, but they were out of, they carved out of wood. They were out. really cool. I thought that was really neat. And uh, then, um, there was something else I was going to say, too. Uh, Did, oh, the, they have that this little room off to the side where you could um, look at some of his inventions about seeing, mm-hmm. you know, okay, let's watch the, like, the moon and the sun and how they orient. It was a, it was a uh, and then a uh, photo what do you call thing. that? It was a mechanical sundial. Yes. Because you rotate it. And it and would it move. And it would roll in the earth and the sun would move Mm -hmm. so he would use that he invented it made it i don't know if he made it or had somebody else i think he probably had somebody else Um, but you would rotate it during that time of the year and he can tell the position of the sun with the earth and how much sun the garden would get and oh oh, man this guy was just like woo. now i can't remember do you remember if he was ambidextrous i do not remember I can't I remember if it remember was him. That. I know Da Vinci was, but I don't know if it was him or not. I can't remember. I know he created that that automatic thing to flip the page of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, he invented that. Um, I can't. I can't remember. So, you, like Da Vinci could draw with one hand and write, and with, write the other. with the other, and that is like yeah, that would be that would blow my mind. Imagine just the the. the just, creases on the brain yes yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing so um one of the other things i was looking i can't i couldn't find it but um i know one of the rooms in the house too um they have it uh they have one of the declarations of independence uh you know there were all those different kinds yeah. i think we did a podcast maybe one time on the different kinds um but they they have an original one there which is obvious i mean it's Thomas jefferson why wouldn't you right but yeah, um they do have they do have that in one of the in one of the rooms um but you could catch our we did do a podcast on the declaration of independence which is quite interesting if you uh, i'll put links to our podcast down below because you know, if you're into this kind of stuff, you can go and look at that. There was, you know, I'll just briefly yeah. touch on it. There was like a committee that was supposed to be there. And these guys were like, yeah, whatever, let Tom do it. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And he, he like drafted like most of it. But it was supposed to be a committee of like five or six people from what I can remember. Yeah, and it was a committee. Yeah. Um, he actually ended up writing most, most of, of it, it and actually went in there when they were reading it and making suggestions. And he hand wrote, he suggestions. Hand wrote suggestions and changes, changes to it and everything. Yeah. And I can't remember, is that still exist or is that missing? That one. One of them is missing. They say that I think is missing. I think they made say that one is. Yeah. So but the, some but private is, owner can own that. And that but that was one thing that I was, I was, wow. ups, I was a little bit upset about because they do have like facsimiles of that. Yeah. 
And when we were there, you know, they in the gift shops, they always have the facsimiles of the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They, we were looking but for But I it. wanted that one. With this handwritten change. And they had a copy of it out where we were doing the quill writing. And I'm like, I want that. And yeah. they're like, oh, I think you can get that down in the main. Yeah. And we went down to the, like, where you buy your tickets and stuff and went in the gift shops there because in that area it's pretty you know like if you don't you can go to that area and not pay for a ticket and go into yeah, the it's, house it's like, it's like um, a department store but for the stuff they didn't they have it there. and i was so disappointed because that's the one copy of it that i don't have you know i mean you can cool. you can get pictures of pretty much everything else and i'm like oh, i don't have that one yeah. i want that one um so that was neat but that's not the one that's hanging on the wall but i remember walking in and going oh, sweetie look it's that version you know yeah, and, there it is and uh and then they brought it up that that was one of the originals which was was awesome yeah yeah so i i pardon, felt pardon the audio folks they're our lawn service is here right at the moment. They just decided to show up when we started recording. Of course they did. Uh, you did get stuff from that department store gift shop. I did. I did. Um, I've been trying to get a little bit of something, something from every one of the president's houses that we go to. And so I did get these seed packets. Um, they're seeds that were collected on the the grounds of Monticello from in the gardens. So I got um, flowering tobacco because tobacco was pretty much the big money maker, you know. Yeah. So I that's why I got that for yeah. Jefferson grew up on a tobacco plantation. And I got um, a melon and I got larkspur. So I have I have the seeds. I didn't grow them. I'm not opening them, um, I'm, but they're going to be on one of the displays. So, um, anyhow, I, I wanted to get a few so things from there. Seeds. So we have seeds, seeds from, from Monticello. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I personal experiences while we were there. I do remember it was hot. I say that all the time. <laughs> and we go south in July. It's hot. It was very hot. Um, while we were waiting to go on a tour, there was somebody who had heat exha heat exhaustion. I do it's remember actually, that. That's how hot it was. The, the, they they brought the paramedics they brought the up paramedics the mountain and, the fire and everything. Truck up yeah, the mountain. it was that was quite interesting. That fire truck trying to get around the shuttles and yeah. Yeah, I do yeah. remember that. I forgot that till you just mentioned that, but yeah. Yeah, they were out in the sun and uh, didn't drink liquids. If you're out in the heat, folks. Oh, speaking of liquids, the, this was the first location <coughs> that I saw that they had bottle refilling stations. Oh, yeah. That was yeah, really neat. That, that was cool, too. I, I haven't in seen efforts, that anywhere no, else. In efforts to um, keep, you know, from creating so many bottles, um, they, of course, they would sell water. Mm -hmm. uh, but they highly suggested to you just to have a bottle and keep refilling it and that was really cool because yeah, so, so many places their they, they, big thing is to sell you section. a bottle of water for five dollars you know or yeah. whatever they had free refilling stations for water yeah I, nah, i'm glad you mentioned that yeah that, that was, was really cool, cool. and, and it, you just put your bottle there and it just would fill it up yeah, you just and, put it in and hit the button and it knew how much water to fill in that and it was cool yeah, yeah. It, was, it was awesome um, we did another video too that came out uh, Wednesday about the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So I'll put a link to that right here. Bing. <laughs> uh, and it's also down in the description. Yeah. But uh, yeah, don't want to talk about that one. He lost his video, <laughs> lost but my it's video. A, it'll be okay. Uh, so we d there are pictures. We and just we have to go about back. The cemetery and. Yeah, uh, Thomas Jeffers is actually buried there on the property. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So when you visit the house and visit the gift shop and make sure make you sure stop, you visit his grave. Stop and pay your respects to Thomas Jefferson yeah. at his grave site there. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else? And then we'll talk about why this place should be could be haunted. Uh, just they they do have a. a a ton of artifacts in in the house and if you go on the tour they will talk to you about the artifacts and um, which ones are, are real to um, 
the period, which ones are actually Thomas Jefferson's, which pieces of the architecture of the house he specifically wanted a certain way, um, who stayed in what rooms. So, that, you know, there's all kinds of and he had little several guests cool that tidbits come up the Monticello and, on a regular basis, yeah. too. Yeah. It was party central. Yeah. So, uh, I highly suggest the tour. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely yeah. if you're in the history you have to go to monticello maybe you have if you have been there mm -hmm. leave us a comment especially um, if you've had a paranormal claim Ooh, yeah even better mm -hmm. so let's talk about why this place could be so haunted all right what do you think and most of the hauntings there and reports of jefferson mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so let me show you this quote okay okay Mm -hmm. This is a quote by Thomas Jefferson. I am as happy nowhere else and in no other society, Thomas Jefferson once wrote, and all my wishes end where I hope my days will end at Monticello. And his days did end at Monticello. He did die in his bed at his famous Monticello. So this is property mm -hmm. that was in his family he played on as a child. Mm -hmm. This is property that he, he inherited when his father passed away. This is a project Monticello that he worked on for over 40 years. Yeah, he didn't just build the house one night. No. <laughs> no. And all the little side projects and everything that he did If we have the ability of free will to come back, where else would Thomas Jefferson go? Yeah. Absolutely. So the potential for haunting, unless you have others. No, I, I think that's the, the He best loved one. this place. Yeah. Literally loved this place. Yeah. And all of his stuff was there. And so many yeah. of his things have come back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and... It would make sense yeah. that he... Yeah, if list. anywhere else, it would be his book collection at the Library well, of Congress. Well, sold it. But, yeah. um, this Maybe is he's this going is by and saying, you know what, I did have that book, but I know where it's at. I'll be right back. That could be. That could be. Yeah. But yeah, he, he definitely loved it there, and he would, he would want to spend more time there. Yeah. Absolutely. So, darling, do yes. you have anything else about Monticello? Not at the moment. I hope we remembered everything. We really should script this out. Eh, someday. We just sit down and wing it. That's all right. That's all right. Makes it more fun. That's they right. enjoy seeing our banter. Yeah, if it all makes it into the video. <laughs> all right, so. All right, folks. Till next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. If you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, Support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting. <laughs>